scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Hmm, correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Unable to piece together the big picture just now, there's a hole in the hypothesis. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth, smiling its deadly smile, laughing at you, and the world, and the living. Go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. To what do I owe the pleasure? Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. Won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch weed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. She's seen it? 
Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. His spirit may be willing, but his body might be too old to endure the rigors of the coast. Good. A good quality to have, both for a police officer and an experimental zoologist. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Well, be that as it may, I'd really appreciate the help. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as fun. But have it your way, detective. If you think it's important, you have been right before. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent, will last you about a week. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. I hope you're not buying this. It dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. What about his eager to leave friend Gary there? Talk to him too, perhaps. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man, I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man, that sounds awfully familiar. Something to keep in mind for later. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. Oh! So that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. 
I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right? I may have had a similar looking mug in the past. That's all. Maybe. Uh, okay. Yes. I did. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Oh, God. 250? How am I gonna pay that? Okay. I'll work harder. I'll pay it off. I promise. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before. But where? What sound? I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash. Could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers. Plastic and glass bottles. The smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. But I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Chimians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. I hope I could help your investigation. In my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment, admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. 
Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. Gary! What's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. No. You've got explaining to do. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. This is it. This will protect your mortal shell. Don it and live. Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning, no one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it would give you guys trouble, I, I wouldn't have... Fuck. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tiny tap now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. CLI officers commanded the Suzerain's Navy. Most of them sided with the King when... It's difficult to say what the Lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Mr. Everard? So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. What could it be about? I probably talked too loud. In the whirling. About some theories I had. Whatever it is, I'm done with it. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. I meant no offense. Just... <laughs> A 
familiar apparatus lies among the reeds, another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. This trap is also full of panicked locusts, no sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Of course, noted. This trap's not too hard to spot. Once you know what to look for, keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we are done. Of course, not it. This is the last of the traps, the one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. No locus. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a real monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked the trap up and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. We did sort of promise to tell them, didn't we? Still smell it. Keep it in now. Don't overreact. Breathe. Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. The lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Whoever tossed it here 
was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachon. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits, in his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. He finds some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library car folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a liter of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits. When damp, these boards are really slippery. Even a sober man could lose their balance here. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Be very, very careful where you step here. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. A 0.75 litre Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits, with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. 
Now that would be just sad. We do know that he was married. But you're right. Let's not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still a question of identifying the body. From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. All right, we should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central General Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55211 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Good idea. There was plenty of information here to go by. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Hold on, officer. I've got Central Demrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to the librarian. Connecting the call in two. One. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? Billy. Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment. I'll have to check our database. On Moreau Drive in Central Jamrock, in a darkened hall lit by orange desk lamps far away from the noise outside, a middle-aged man taps commands into an old radio computer. A printout falls on the desk. Behind him, a lonely reader scours some dusty bookshelves, looking for a paperback. Yes, hello. Are you still there? I found Billy Majan's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Maurice, what? A woman yells. Then, yes, yes, okay, 
If it was the police, she starts explaining something. Yes, it, it was my colleague, Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Marie! She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh, one second. What was he wearing? Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? The man was about 173 centimeters tall. Stout, with dark hair and a mustache. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he slipped. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Any information on the library card? Good, you have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set. Something smells good, soup along yo. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. You're right. Let's talk this true. You hear light footsteps passing by the door and some folk music playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Yes, it's hard. But there is no easy way to handle this information. It just has to happen, as soon as possible. The lieutenant motions towards the door. And someone turns down the radio. Tidying up, nervously.
It's you from the book stand. Did you come to bring my cockatoo back? I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief. For now, you're on your own here. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. Keep it together. You don't want your body language to tell her the news. Sorry, I'm rambling. It's just that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So, how can I help you? It's me, Victor, and the kids here. We have two daughters, Jenny and Jolie. Mm -hmm. They came home later. They are good girls. The girls are staying at their friend's place tonight. And Victor is... out. She swallows visibly. He has a problem with drinking, and so he disappears every now and then. He's probably in the box drinking with his friends. I sent him to the library a few days ago, but I guess something came up. His old leather jacket. Um, it's just your average brown leather jacket, but he bought it as a teenager, so... Yes, the lining is hand-sewn. It's blue. I tried to make the thing more weatherproof since he's running around with it in the middle of winter. Oh, it's in Janrock. The one at Mayro Street. I don't know the official name. Central Jamrock Public Library? I think... Yes, if that's the one on Miro. She folds her hands across her chest. Here it comes. I don't want to. There has been enough pain. I don't want to do this. Do what? Officer. Too late. You ruined it. Just say it now. Excuse me? What? What did you say? She's in pain. She's in so much pain. And so are you. Your chest is burning. You sense that the lieutenant is ready to say something. Don't let him. Fix this yourself. You did this. The lieutenant closes his mouth, but he doesn't look pleased. Just tell me what happened to Victor. Oh. Yes, I... I'm sorry, I just need a... I don't know what to say. What? I guess what I want to know is, how did he die? And you just found him there? Lying in the cold. How long had he been there? She doesn't reply. Her eyes well up with tears as she struggles to keep it together. You hear the clock ticking in the children's room. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. It burns like acid. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? All right, I'll call them. She can't take much more. Her stomach is churning. Soon she will have to go to the bathroom and scream. 
Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? You haven't even taken him away? No, we have. He was taken to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number, in case you want to contact him earlier. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still a bit... A brain condition. Yes, you're a total fucking horror show. Yes, that's what happened to Victor too. Apologies, my partner did not mean to make light of the situation. Again, if there's anything we could do for you, then don't hesitate to call the RCM, ma'am. She just nods, distant and inconsolable. The bed springs rattle beneath her as she begins to shake. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon to a scream. I'll take it from here. Thank you. We should step outside and talk. So, the death notification. Well? No, it didn't. Well, I'll call the station when we are done with the day and inform them about the identity of the deceased. But yes, that's on me. Let's get on with the murder investigation. boxes wait on the shelves, and your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. And here you are, quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever, turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie, mask in origin. The pin is an antique, quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Ha <laughs> ha, nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He tries to play it cool, remain professorial. But inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks. But dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. Thanks. Good. Okay. And... Completely empty? No locusts? No phasmid either? 
That's not ideal, but... I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Inseal Indian Fasmid is even more clever than we thought. Of course, more clever. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Why don't you try convincing Morel his hypothesis is invalid? Thank you for the vote of no confidence, Gary. An officer, I appreciate your concern, but please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. You're jabbing at the soft underbelly of his psyche. He realizes he's gotten defensive. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. Kids, what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Delinquents, my favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. Like Kuno's dad? Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about books. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame! Shut up, C. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! Deny everything, Kuno. You need to lawyer up. Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present. There's definitely something going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. Kuno doesn't fucking care! All around. 
around you. The hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Oh, I'm not being sarcastic at all. We are making real progress here. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Like Kuno's dad? Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah? Kuno took the bugs, so what? They're not pets. Don't you know what locusts are? When they come out of the fucking sky. Fucking descend and shit. Stop! You stop. It's like they're fucking night. Local city, night city, city of rage. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. You don't have a brain for this shit. No one has the brain to take Kuno shit. It's because of the lame Kuno. I am who I am, see? Fuck you. Oh, Kuno! It's so lame, even the pig knows it's lame. Please stop! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. The girl's face appears again, above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? Yeah, whatever. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. So it was just a child. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. 
We can come back next season when it's warmer. He's right, dear Morel. Come now, we've waited so long. What's one more season? You're right, dear. We'll get our shot yet. I'm sure of it. The slouch in his shoulders tells you otherwise. He doesn't know how many more field expeditions he has left in him. This place is much better for field work in the summer, believe me. Thank you, dear. And you, Detective Fox? You've been great company to an old lady and her stubborn husband. You're right, Lena. The RCM is worth their salt. More so than they say on the radio. Okay, it's uh, 1113 Tabernacle Road, Jamrock, but... <laughs> you too. Morel, let's roll. Porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. You press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune, echoing in the hallway, a lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessons, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know, this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it. A click, then silence for a bit. Then... The tape stops spinning. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it, like, a million times. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. Gart, you have to convince Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. The lieutenant looks at you as you remove the tape from the boombox. He doesn't say anything. Hey, was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. The whirling doesn't need more sad style. That's one of the styles it can do without right now. It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. 
I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I can see that. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? There are some people out there, but mostly a post-meridian slumber has fallen on the premise. Not super lively. It would be wiser to perform in the evening, no? But the choice is yours. Yes, you could always do it in the evening. It will be less scary with a lot of people. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Immediately, a hands. Where do you the bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still, you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse, you're sweating. Just make sure you move, okay? Don't be stiff. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. A lump's in your throat suddenly. To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Though it once was larger How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Towards the seven sisters Towards those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In the tiny yard there I have been so glad here Looking forward to the past here But now You are all alone None of this matters Do you hear that? It's the most pathetic applause in the world, Harry. Made of pity. No one liked you. 
Someone walks out of the room, by the front door. Some woman. Is it because of you? That's it. I'm unplugging it. That's it. You're unpowered. Let's go, officer. These people wouldn't know a good performance if it beat them in the ass. Detective Dubois, it was downright tragic. Now, let's go. I mean it, he thinks. Put your hands where I can see them. Show me your hands. This is the pigs. Show me your hands. Right now! Show me your hands! Right now! Scavenged, battery-powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun in her shaking hand. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative disease. Madame, please drop the firearm immediately. You shouldn't be here. Something's very wrong with her. She's completely out of control. This is bad. Getting a weapon back is the priority. We can't have an unhinged civilian running around as a girl. Comply, or I will lie the fuck up. Failure to comply. Suspect is displaying aggression. Officer, under duress! Officer, under duress! Her eyes bulge with terror. Veins protrude on her forehead. I am the police. Don't move. Don't move. Hands on your head. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Suspect is on the loose. Suspect at large. Officer, administer street justice at her own peril. That one extra lift with a baton or extra knee strike above was what was actually required. Suspect is under control. Suspect is under control. Be careful, detective. Don't do anything that might set her off. The situation looks bad. Calm yourself. Steady your breathing. This is dangerous. You're 70% certain you always leave your gun loaded. All right. This is how we do it. You hurl the tear bag in her face already dark at night, and immediately close the distance. Left hand grabs the barrel, right one breaks the wrist. A drop of sweat runs down your nose, and in it you see the Martinez Inlet, wrapped in the night. In the abandoned fish market, three figures standing in a spectacular light show. A large, loud woman is pointing an empty firearm at the other two. She doesn't want to listen or even to be heard. What? This is a police issue. Police weapons have bullets. This isn't real. What is this? Police guns have bullets. What is this? Why did you sell me this? Grab the gun, right now. This might be your only chance. No one ever cares anymore. Why would they cheat me like this? Oh, well, I need to figure out what to do with her now. Nobody's ever around. Nobody ever comes to visit me. She's in a stupor. I've seen this before. God knows for how long. Could be days when they get like this. Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Dementia and Channel 8 and loneliness. Could be. Her hands were trembling and she did seem uncoordinated. But what are we going to do with her? I don't think there's any need for that. In her current state and without the gun, she isn't really a threat to anyone. 
We could let Titus know. This is a perfect problem for the local peacekeepers to handle. They might even know her family. Then we can ask him once we get back to the whirling. But we have to hurry, because it's late and they might have already gone home. But I think we're done here for now. Let's head out. This is done. Please... Leave the radio on. She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more? The woman stands slumped. She looks catatonic under her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Is one of those things a police cap? She doesn't even flinch as you reach out and disentangle the familiar looking lieutenant's cap from her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Oh, is that yours? It's hard to say. It's been so long since you wore yours. It's your hat. The old woman doesn't react to your touch. 